What do we have here? Uh, appears to be a rifle of some sort. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gun, it's not a rifle. Okay. A rifle actually has rifling in it. It grooves down the barrel so that when the ball comes out, it spins and goes straight. This is a smooth bore musket. It's a carbine. A carbine is just a musket or a rifle with a shorter barrel. Muskets were never really accurate. During the Revolutionary War, they never said, ready, aim, fire. They just said, ready, level, fire. <laughs> and just hope it went in the right direction. <laughs> I'm looking to sell my antique gun today. It looks very old, possibly pre-World War I, but I, I don't know. I've had the gun for probably two years, and it's been sitting in a garage collecting dust. I'm looking to sell it today for around $2,000. If I make a sale today, I'd love to take my girlfriend possibly on a nice trip, not involving work. This is interesting. So where did you get this thing? I uh, travel a lot for my job, and I walked into a random antique shop and saw this. OK, um, this carbine, it's got a saddle ring in it. So this would uh, go in the holster on the horse, and then you would have a piece of leather strapped to the horse. So that way, if you dropped your gun, you wouldn't lose your gun. Model of 1843. This was super high tech for 1843. Really? So there was a guy named John Hall. He invents this cool little process. It's a lot easier to load it right through here than lifting it up, going, it go, everything going through here. Yeah. Okay. Um, this gun. It even has a Vegas connection. Okay. When the Civil War broke out, the government wanted like a standardized 58 caliber musket for the infantry so everyone can have the same bullets and everything else like that. This was a different caliber, it was smaller. Okay. So this guy named Eastman, he buys like 5,000 of these off the government for $3.50. And then it cost him 75 cents to get them reboard. He made the barrel slightly larger to take the ammunition that they were using during the Civil War. Got it and immediately turns around and sells it back to the government for $22. <laughs> Smart guy, good deal for him. And uh, the general involved was uh, General Fremont, you know, Fremont Street downtown. Oh, wow. It was in every newspaper in the United States about the, uh, the Hall carbine affair. I had no idea this had so much history behind it. I, I think it's in good shape. So how much do you want for it? Considering it's from the Civil War, 2000 would be cool. <sighs> That might be right. I just really got to call a guy in because I don't know enough about it. I mean, you know, in this business, when you don't know a little bit about something, it's a dangerous thing. So I'm going to call my buddy. I'll be right back. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to give Alex a call and let him take a shot at it. Oh, nice. The infamous Hall carbine. Hall North carbine. OK. Well, I um, mean, there's a big difference, actually. Do you mind if I pick it up? No, please. OK. Oh, yeah. So. It's called a Hall North because Hall came up with the original rising breech block, but North perfected it. On an original Hall light rifle, there's a hook on the bottom, and you would pull back on the hook and push up, and the block would rise. And the thing about the hook is it got in the way. It actually hooked on things. It really wasn't that efficient. So Simeon North came up with this idea. You pull this lever out to the side a little bit to get past the locking area, and you push up. Now, one thing that's really cool is it was designed to come apart really easily. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just glad somebody's handling it and knows what they're doing. <laughs> OK. This comes out. Now, the reason behind this design is twofold. One, as you can take this apart so easily, it's much simpler to clean. You can also make repairs. And you could load it, conceal it. And if someone came at you, you could fire it at close range. Wow. Yep. It's like the first James Bond gun. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> cool. And it's a total self-defense weapon. All right, I will put this back together. The gun actually looks to be in really nice shape. It is marked here, S North for Simeon North, Middletown, Connecticut, 1843. So this is an original configuration. So that's actually very good. All right. So the big question, what's it worth? I think if it fires, it could be worth about 5000 OK. Here's what I'd like to do. I know you like to see things fire. I was hoping we might be able to take it to the range. Uh, I'd like to fire it as a, as a full carbine, but also I'd like to take the breech block out and try to fire it as a pistol. All right. Uh, do you know where the gun range is in Boulder City? Yeah, I can meet you there. All right, looks like we got our plan. Cool. I'll bring my stuff. 
I definitely like 5,000 more than two, and hopefully it shoots and we can get anywhere near that number. Alex. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? I'm oh, pretty good. Um, so you're gonna shoot this thing, right? Yeah, I am. So I set up two targets today. First, I'll shoot the full-length carbine at the glass base with blue-colored water. Then I'm gonna remove the breech from the carbine and use it like a pistol, and I'll shoot it at the balloon. So I'm gonna do a slightly smaller load of black powder than would they would normally have used just out of safety concern. Powder goes in the breech, a little bit of grease, Put it on the ball. Did they do that back in 1860, or we're just doing that today? We're doing today's that today day. for a little today's bit of sake. a little okay. bit of safety. I give you 50-50 odds. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> First shot! <laughs> wow! This carbine is mechanically perfect. It fires brilliantly and it's super easy to load, which was the point of the design. So now I get to fire this breech block pistol, but really close to a very threatening, large red balloon. Here we go. I'm definitely standing back. Stop being negative. <laughs> Any I'm last words? You. I'm gonna stand behind you. Yeah, I'm gonna get closer because this would have been in like somebody's pocket. You know, the idea is like you're within a couple of feet of somebody. Yeah! <laughs> that works. That one works. That works great. All right, super cool. I'll give you that. Everything works like a champ. Yeah. So he wants $2,000 for it. What do you think I can get for it? I think he's being generous. I think you'd get $5,000 for it. Retail? Retail. You'll retail it for $5,000. OK. All right, thanks, man. I'll All tell right. you if I get it. Thanks, Vinny. Thank you so much. All right, that was fun. So um, what would you take for it? You still want two grand? <laughs> Uh, so what about like 3,500? I mean, I mean, the best I can do is $3,000. I mean, I'm gonna retail it for five, but I gotta pay everybody, and like, there's a million and one expenses. I'll so. tell you what, the fact that, uh, that you brought me out here and we got to fire it and have a lot of fun today is worth it, and I'm cool with the three. All right, cool, man. Um, bring the gun down to the pawn shop. Um, I'll have Alex clean everything up, and, uh, I'll get you paid. Thanks, pal. All right, cool, man. I'm happy we took a shot and came out here and saw that it worked.